you know, listen, if it, if a lot of them fail after do too, but like Steven said, man, if, if, if you've got like two or three Yanks that get supported, don't, don't wait till two o'clock is what I would yeah. say, man. Take that small loss, take that small game or whatever, you know, break even. But we've seen it. I mean, we saw what WW, we saw what WWR like three days in a row, PPSI, I mean, a ton of these, they do that. And, and to me, that's just telling you, hey, bro, I'm giving you an hour. I'm giving you this hour. Crazy, Get out. <laughs> Welcome to the Steady Trade Podcast. Um, we're back with Tim and Kim, or Kim and Tim. And every now and then we get some comments across YouTube, which we don't reply to directly because we like to save them up and answer them in person for you guys and give each person a little bit of, sh- of a shout out. So if you want to leave a comment on this episode, I'm sure there'll be a, a mailbag in the future. So just leave the comment below and we'll be sure to pick it up and, and answer it in a future one. But otherwise, we've got 10 or so uh, questions for, for each of us and all of us that we'll, we'll just run through. But first of all, how are my American brothers and sisters doing? Oh, Ladies first. I'm Ladies talking first. about you guys, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I feel uh, excited that we're about to have rain because our island hasn't had rain in a long time. So a lot of res- my reservoir is dry. So I'm excited about that. How about how about you, Tim? So so how does the water work in Hawaii? You have is it, you don't there is, you don't have wells there there uh, is no there's no wells there's county. Well, of course, I guess a volcanic water. island that would probably be challenging to pound a well. Exactly. On, on a volcanic island. Exactly. So. It's kind of tricky. So, but there is county water in certain kind of little towns, but up up on a mountain where there isn't. So we have a reservoir uh, that you kind of is that is that the on. Alex is that the Alex Jones kind of tap water or not? Oh, what is the Alex Jones tap water? I'm just Man, sorry. I'm not I feel like I'm just dropping the ball on my obscure references. You don't know about the mind controlling chemicals that the federal government is putting in the water. <laughs> oh no, I did not. <laughs> I gotta get myself up to up to speed on these <laughs> on these <laughs> d- dilemmas that are happening in our world. No, my, so my, my, I'm my, probably escaping it. My Nikola Tesla in love with a pigeon <laughs> reference went over your guys' head. I, I didn't know that. Now one. my Alex Jones mind controlling chemicals went over your head. I, I clearly am not paying attention to the excellent news sources you are. To I have to get myself plugged in. <laughs> I never heard oh, anyway, of it before. Yes, things are great for me. So, all right, good, good. Don't, don't go down that road. Don't is go it down cold? That road. Is it cold? Uh, actually, um, today is beautiful. So perfect Indian summer day, as they say. Oh, beautiful. You know, I, actually, I should probably post a picture. You know, it's a nice thing you get those cold nights. Yeah. And, well, and you do that. You grew up in northern climate. You yeah. get the cold nights that make the the leaves pop, but then it warms yeah. up during the day. Beautiful. Day. Beautiful. Beautiful. Even though some people think Stephen, we're in the it's same. raining and dirty in England, right? I mean, I, I just wanted to say that I'm really delighted that you've experienced that northern climate cold day with the warm weather and the leaves crackling. I just wanted to say that. And that's more important than how my weather can be at any time. <laughs> Pretty beautiful. Fall is a beautiful <laughs> time of year. And leaves popping with color i miss that i miss that the most is the change of seasons i even enjoy winter so i definitely miss uh fall and the colors yeah again you know the thing i'll always say about and we'll move on from the weather here but um yeah i mean i love four season i love the change in the seasons the problem is just in northern michigan winter is like seven months long so (laughs) if if it if it was if it was like two months long, it'd be a little different. So exactly, exactly. Just embrace it. Just embrace <laughs> it. End of the wild. End of the wild. 
hunt, raise that family. Mm, delicious. Did, did you did you see the Tim Ferriss post about hunting? The the kind of advocacy ah. towards hunting. I'll, I'll send it to you if you didn't see it. I send thought, it to me, yeah. I well. thought of you. It sounds like it's going to be a really great take on how it's, you know, really actually. Well, it just, and again, we could save this for another time. It just makes, yeah. it, it, I mean, it makes sense. And I love, I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen I, I the pictures and, and the completely irrational comments you get from my favorite. And well, I promise we'll move on. My favorite was the count on my son's deer. The guy says, Tim, it's one thing to post a picture of a steak. That's fine, but you shouldn't post a picture of a dead animal. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. where does the steak come from? The tooth fairy? Santa Claus? Who brings the steak? <laughs> so anyway, we've enough randomness. Stephen, what's the first question? The first question is by a gentleman, it's an easy one. We're going to get things started with an easy one today. We're going to break the ice, break the leaves crackling. Uh, it's more common. He says, what, do you, what size do you call a low float? Dead basic, dead easy. What? Kim, I mean, do you, Kim, do you know? Well, Let's Kim, start with Kim. Kim can Let's open this one, yeah. Yeah. So, so how many shares <laughs> mean today? <laughs> in, in, in the traditional day trading nomenclature, as they say, Mm -hmm. What is what is the cutoff for for three. a number of what we would call three what? Oh, three. Uh, I was thinking of the PDT. Oh, yep, yep, yep. That, that's the number of trades on the PDT. So, yep, yep. Okay. So, um, so I will answer. Um, okay. so yeah. typically we consider ten million the cutoff. Okay. So less than ten million shares in the freely tradable float. So, um. And, you know, that, that is kind of, now that number isn't like concrete. You know, I talk about like 15, 20 million, I'll call those low-ish float. But the analogy I always give is, I mean, if you look at like something like Apple, I mean, I think there's like 7 billion shares in Apple's float. So even if you're talking, I mean, I mean, listen, if you talk to some hedge fund guy, he would probably laugh at a hundred million float. But when we're talking retail day traders, less than 10 million shares is what we consider low flow. Okay, that's good. Too. I mean, it, it's funny because the irony for me is I would say 10 million was a high float. And uh, the, the low floats that I keep away from are the 100,000, 200,000. <laughs> Well, and, 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 and again, and I know loads, I've heard loads, of, loads of, loads of, <laughs> Well, now the one counter argument I would give you, I mean, look at, you know, you can, and, and I'm not necessarily arguing with you, but I mean, think of the increase in volume. I mean, I mean, what was PPSI? I think that Three, was like 40, two. 50 million shares in pre-market. Yeah. So to me, that's the only, and I'm not arguing with you, but the only yeah, counter I'm, point I'm I would make just is, I'm messing is I you. almost see that number creeping higher because of the float rotation idea. So, yeah, I mean, look, even like floats are weird one, right? Because even obviously it's a good guide and you want to short, obviously the, the lower floats are the scarier ones to short and the better ones to long often. But it's, it's, it mostly comes down to volume for me because you never know what, what hedge funds in it, what institutional ownerships in it, who's short, if there's another private ownership that's big, like they're all, they're, they can all move in varying ways, right? So it comes yeah, down to price I mean, action, PPS. but yeah. Jeez, oh, it's PPS. PPSI PPS, was three and a half, I think. Yeah, but it's my point is it's about to, this thing might break out again. It's creeping up. It's creeping yeah, up. <laughs> um, I it yeah, the, the biggest point, I, and, and I would agree with you, is you know, you look at yesterday, 320 million shares traded. And this is the point before we move on, on no news. That's what's crazy about PPSI. This was no news, nothing. So what do you feel did that? What, what does that when there's no news? Okay. I'll, go with the, I'll go with my Alex Jones answer. At, I'll let Steven answer though. And then I have my conspiracy theory. Okay. What do you why think? Did, why, why did the move on? Why, no why news? do you think PPSI trades 300 million shares on no news? Um, because hedge funds have got algorithms set up to squeeze shorts. 
I think that was Tim's <laughs> answer. So, so that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, the reason I joke about the whole Alex Jones conspiracy theory is I was screaming about this like four years ago. When I flipped from being 90% short bias to, to more long bias was 2015. And I, I felt like Alex Jones back then. Because I said exactly what Stephen said. And people are like, hedge funds aren't in penny stocks. They mm-hmm. don't touch these low floaters. And I'm like, something changed. Yeah. And I mean, and that's why I changed. Because I'm like, it's not the way it used to be. Yeah. And, yep. and yep. that's why I joke about the whole black helicopters and Bigfoot thing. Yeah. But thank you, Stephen. Because, yeah. because that was my answer as well. So. Okay. Yeah, uh, no. <clears throat> like, like, honestly... I mean, it, and I and at the end of the day, I blame our friend Tim Sykes because now he's our friend, he's my business associate. I love the guy. But what he did, he brought shorting low price stocks to the to the mm. masses. I was I was gonna say the asses, but to the <laughs> masses. Okay. <laughs> he now again, shorting is an incredible strategy. It's it, it, it's Steven's core strategy if you do it right. But before Tim Sykes, no one knew you could short these low floats. You could, yeah. I mean, you, it was impossible to get borrows. I wow. used to spend, I used to spend hours a day trying to get borrows, hours. And then wow. you still wouldn't get borrows. Wow. And now you can borrow anything. I mean, I mean, you pay the fees. You can, you never used to be able to get borrows on any of these things. Wow. So I think whoever these hedge funds are, and, and nice work, fellas. I think they recognize that the retail traders could now realize this strategy. And then, you know, yeah. about 2014, 2015, all these brokers started popping up that would let you borrow anything. And right. I think they were like, hey, Joe Blow thinks it's a good idea to short a, a, a 100% runner with news with 10X float rotation. Let's yeah. run that algo. Let's dip them and rip them. That, that's yeah. where that whole pattern I talk about every day. They suck them in at the open and then they turn on that freaking spigot and they blow them up. So, wow. But do you, did you, you know, I'm almost thinking of the big short, uh, Michael Lewis's book about Brad Katsuyama and what IEX, you know, before they became IEX was seeing. And I feel like that's a book that I read, you know, what, Flash five boys. years ago. Flash, Flash you're, boys, you're right. Thinking, yep, yep. Flash big short, boys. great book, but you're thinking Flash yes, Boys. Yes, I'm yeah. thinking Flash Boys, totally right. And I almost feel like I should read Flash Boys again now because of our conversations. Do you do you think that perhaps what happens in Flash Boys, you know, do you feel like both that that could be part of this? That the concept of how slightly they slightly to- different. You know, you know what they're doing in Flash Boys is they're they're just you know that's more like spoofing and that's more hedge fund versus hedge fund. Okay. So what they're doing is they're slightly different. You know, when we're talking short and low flows, you're talking idiots in their mom's basements. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Flash Boys is the smartest guys in the universe versus the smartest guys in the universe. Yeah. And what they're trying to do is beat each other by a, a microsecond. I mean, yes. literally a microsecond. Right. Right. They they would shorter fiber runs in the center. They put in microwave, uh, pat, you know, because your microwaves are faster than fiber because of the bends in the in the right. tunnels and, and stuff. So s- different, different. Okay. That, that's more smart guys versus smart guys. Okay, so. okay, it, it's Just, interesting. I I, I it, some conspiracies are true, you know. <laughs> this, the this best is- ones are. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just one quick one, just to touch on. Just to, it was another so question. So, Stephen, do you, do you agree? I mean, I know I get, I, I get very ranty on this topic, but I, and I know you've only been around three or four years. But do you agree with my points about the availability of borrows and everybody wanting to be a short seller? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, and Tim Sykes has said this before as well. The, the big um, brokers will just give you the borrows and then trade against you. Um, and that's how they make money. But I mean, I'll just say it's incredible to see stocks never have a red candle pre-market. They go up and up and up and up and up and up till 925. And then all of a sudden, where's all the buyers gone? No one cares anymore. 
give that's it 15 that. minutes, give it 15 minutes, <laughs> boom, out of nowhere, just as the stock's about to fail, boom, it catches yeah. every shot by surprise. How does it happen? I don't know. And that's, it's like, to me, it's like the Wizard of Oz. That's why I keep, if you're watching on YouTube, I keep doing this dial thing. And that's what I see in my mind. I see like this, the wizard of the man behind the curtain. He's got this little dial, like Steven says, he's kind of, or, or even like a, almost like a throttle. You know, he's like, yeah. re, he's like revving it up in pre-market. Yeah. And then the open comes and he just yanks that throttle back. You know how, when you're like in a boat and then the boat just stops totally. and then he waits for them all. He's like, come on guys, come on. And then he just floors it again. And that's the visual I see. So wow. Wow. Like, like, honestly, I just, I imagine that there's like. And then it's room. market buy, market, market buy. Shorts, market buy, market buy. And he's just like, oh, yeah. Rain, money. Now I see money just raining down on him as he's selling into him. You know, they're, they're market buying and he's selling into him. Thanks, buddy. Buying 50 cents above the, above the ask, you know. Wow. But it's true though, because they'll literally buy, 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 buy on the way pre-market to keep the volume as it's light on the way up. And then they'll squeeze it through and then just sell, 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 sell everything that they bought at a much higher price. It's just crazy. I mean, that's how I'd expect it would work. But a guy called Coach Ken said, if market makers can manipulate a stock price to keep it above a dollar, are they also manipulating prices at ten dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars? Can market makers cause the stock to break support or resistance levels? Do market makers also produce news articles or other catalysts? I mean, I think we've kind of already answered the question, right? I mean, a market maker won't produce a news article or a catalyst, but they'll they'll manage the market price though. Yeah. Um, now the biggest thing you got to keep in mind, and I think this is what a lot of people mistake in, in today's day and age, NASDAQ and NYC, you know, entirely electronic trading. Okay. A lot, a lot of people, a lot of people might, might not know this, but those guys at the NYSE, those four guys that are still standing there that they show on CNBC. I like how every time the market goes down, it's the same three old guys doing this. You know, it's like, wait, it's a stock got, photo. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's not a stock photo. It's just, there's only four guys that are still there. You know, they probably buy them lunch. It's like a greeter at Walmart or something, <laughs> but um, so it's, it's all electronic trading. So the only ta- place you've got that manipulation is in OTCs. So mm. now will they support the bid on OTCs? Will they, you know, you know, look at your, you know, do all kinds of chicanery. Yes. That's one of the reasons I try and I avoid OTCs because I just, I think it's just, there's too much of that BS going on. So chicanery is a word I mean, that is not trade used enough. Do you trade much, Steven? Nah, never. Do I lose you? on them. I've lost on them the few times I have. I know like Jack and Kyle and stuff do, and they do really well on it. And Gritani did, but just not for me. Too, it's a too liquid and it doesn't move properly unless I'm just missing the liquid ones, but I just don't see them. Yeah. So, so that would be the answer to the questions is in OTC land. Yes. Now they can't put out news. They can't do that kind of manipulation, but they can do price manipulation. Like, I mean, if you're watching level two OTC stock, you'll see that you'll see them, you know, you'll see funky stuff happening, but that's again, it's just, I, I, I mean, we had one day OPTI classic pump and dump. I mean, it spikes 60%. And then goes red five minutes later. I just, I just, I'm not a big fan of OTCs. So, nah, I have a, a pretty good question by Storm Traders a few weeks ago, and it's actually a question that I have the same problem with. He says, "I never understood first green days. You always find them when the move is already made, and you find yourself buying the top. I rather like the stock to prove itself to me and buy the second day dip or higher day break on technicals." First green days are basically big boys buying in, so you're always late to the party, and that's dangerous. I find it a very dangerous pattern, especially for beginners. Don't understand uh, why it's being promoted, but then again, I trade mostly NASDAQs. OTCs are similar. So what's what's your view on that? Because I, I think it's the same thing. Often by the time the moves happened, it's happened. You've got to buy that dip, right? Or the next Well, day. yes, number one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, buying dips off of support on, is very why strategy that's that's kind of one of Roland Wolf's core strategies a lot of these you know these dip and rips and VWAP holds that I look at he's more looking at dip buys off of support because that what works for him now 
my answer is always, you know, just wait for afternoon. And because to me, that's why I go that ABCD pattern, the gun pattern, the view app hold pattern, you know, we, we, there's all these different names for it. But to me, that, that is a stock that has now proven itself. And, and, and I can't remember his name. He used that term, you know, so that big morning spike. And then when that stock hangs around all day, when it breaks in the afternoon, doesn't mean it's guaranteed, but it's now proven itself that the buyers mm-hmm. have hung around all day. There's still interest in this thing. That's yeah. the biggest thing is we know everybody's got ADD. Everybody's got FOMO in the morning, but when that thing hangs around all day and breaks in the afternoon, that shows you that it's everyone's still there. The, the party's still going. Wow. So that's my biggest thing on those first green days, focus on afternoons. So. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I would just add as a short seller these days, 2 PM is the scariest time on earth because it's the time when you're about to lose all of your day, day's gains, or you're about to go red on the day <laughs> more than likely. <laughs> But you can't let the stock go. Like, say you're short into a posh, hangs, 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 cracks comes back, hangs, hangs, cracks comes back. 2 p.m. You're just thinking it's the whole day is going to go red. <laughs> but I can't cut it. See, well, and, and that's, I mean, and again, because that's that's looking at it from both sides. And, you know, listen, if it, if a lot of them fail afternoon too, but like Steven said, man, if, if, if you've got like two or three yanks that get supported, don't don't wait till two o'clock is what I would nah. say, man. Take that small loss, take that small gain or whatever, you know, break even. But we've seen it. I mean, we saw what WW, we saw what WWR like three days in a row. PPSI, I mean, a ton of these, they do that. And and to me, that's just telling you, hey, bro, I'm giving you an hour. I'm giving you this hour. Crazy, Get out. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, for, just for the audience before we move on, if you ever see a stock not do what it's meant to do, like more than once, like it should break down. If it doesn't break down, if it like just breaks down and then all of a sudden it doesn't hold, but the ask, the ask gets taken out and it pops back up with a vengeance. Uh, that's a really, really bad sign uh, that there's someone bigger than you moving the stock mm-hmm. well um, said. You, you don't want to be where the bigger money's controlling it but mm-hmm. you don't want to be fighting against the bigger money anyway that's for sure no. um we'll have one from kim uh, this is josh he says i don't know if i'm losing because i'm bad or if i'm losing because i'm not in sync with myself how can i tell the difference uh i think that is really all about keeping track of your trades what what is com- what are the common denominators to when you're losing? Are you uh, is it is it the kind of time of day? Is it a particular style you're attempting to trade? Uh, you you got to track everything, and if you're not including your emotions, I feel and and track what's happening for you by way of uh, is there something that you're going into the trade with repeatedly where you're presuming something uh, or just guessing that I think there's not enough information there in that guy's question to probably answer beyond that. But I, I would say, are you tracking everything? It, it, could, it could be just also bad luck, like luck plays a part. I, I think I told you guys, I was reading that book, The Biggest Bluff. Uh, and you know, it's about skill and luck. And sometimes if you don't know which, if you're not tracking yourself, there's times when you could be winning where you've just gotten lucky and there's times when you're winning because it's skill. So how do you know the difference? You have to keep track. Yeah, no, that- yeah I, I would, I would, you know, again, it's, it's hard to answer from a one sentence question. I agree, but you know, to me, you know, in whether it be your emotions, how your day is going, did you train or not? Did you sleep or not? You know, there's all these things that, that you know, again, a lot of people laugh at that stuff, but man, I, uh, I mean, it's just like, if you don't think these little micro things make a difference, you're trying to do the hardest thing in the world, you know, well, maybe not the hardest, but one of the hardest things to do, you're up against billion dollar hedge funds, you're up against people with 20 years more experience than you, you have to 
find a methodology or process to track that. You know, how did you sleep? What did you eat? You know, are you hungover? Did you get in a fight with, with your wife? You know, I mean, yeah. where, I mean, are, are you on a losing streak and should you maybe take a couple of days off? You know, these are things that, <clears throat> that you gotta just, and I think journaling is one of the best ways to do that. I mean, For sure. a couple For episodes, sure. I brought up those those I had you know a stack of journals like this. So. Yep, for sure. And and are you three months in? You know, if you're three months in and you're asking that question, it's it that's that you're it's you too soon to ask that question. Yeah. You don't have enough data exactly. But the, but the data, I mean, the, the the best thing about data is it doesn't lie, right? And the best thing about looking at a chart at the end of the day is you can say, well, I would have been right if I'd done this, or I would have been wrong if I'd done that. Yeah. That's why poker is so difficult because half the time you don't see if you're right or wrong. It's just purely guessing and letting the bankroll work itself out. That's why poker is much harder. At, at, the, at the end of every day trading, you're like, I did this right, I did this wrong. You correct. You, you have that correction every day in your head. Um, I have a, a question from Coach Ken says, why are Tim and Kim on separate cameras when they are clearly in the same room? You can tell by the color of the walls. They are not fooling anyone. What is going on between you two? Well, it, it's, it's a little known fact, but, you know, Kim and I are actually in the Illuminati. Um, you know, this is something that. <laughs> Keep it down. I can't believe you just said that out loud. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can personally handle this. So I don't, I don't know how the viewers are going to feel. I might have to move. So this, on one, this was one of my, <laughs> this was one of my favorite questions because first of all, I wish Kim and I were in the same room considering she's in Hawaii and I'm in Michigan, but nevertheless, now listen, Hey, this, you know, this guy might figure out who killed JFK, whether aliens exist, he might even track down Bigfoot, but the simple fact that we both have blue paint on our walls does not mean we're in the same room. So no, we're not. And it's no, not even actually, the same blue. It's not right? even the same blue. I have like an aqua blue and yours is like more of a military blue, which is no big surprise for you. I have to say, I wouldn't mind being in the same room with you, Tim, but I would not want to be in Michigan. So God bless Michigan. But I think I'm happy here in Hawaii. So maybe one day we all will be in the same room at the same time. All three of us. That would be pretty fun. Uh, probably someday probably if, you know if we, we could actually travel you know exactly. that, would, that would be awesome so, exactly but, uh, but Tim but yeah on, on, uh, uh, to, to back to the question while you know there's a very good chance Stanley Kubik did fake the moon landing Kim and I are not in the same room this is not a level of that type of of, of manipulation as they say but so. uh, I mean I'm not sure how in which of your mansions you're in, Tim, but that looks a little bit like the White House or what I'd imagine the White House to be, like the West Wing or some shit like that. Well, I mean, my temporary my temporary office is the basement. So oh. this is just storage closets. Actually, there's my ping pong table. Nice. Which that's awesome. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do that too. Pin, 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 pin. I'll, I'll do that. I'll that do that, that too, so they can see. There, there, yeah, you, go, there you go. Decorations. We're, we're, oh, what, it all it got blurry. See, see, she's concealing the fact that we're in the same room. So, I mean, if if you guys want, I can also show you my room, which I grew up in as a child. <laughs> yes, please. It's, small, it's got a small bed and it's quite small, but I, I, I've been in here since I was five. Really? Oh my god, that's amazing. It's, it's such a, I, I think I never want to leave. I really like uh, the I feeling think. of never growing up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Peter Pan. But uh, no, nah, I'll be moving out soon. But <laughs> next question. Um, Jesse Rose, curious on where I could find one of these worksheets that Tim held up about halfway through. I've been looking around and content to find them anywhere. And I know they are part of the STT, but I don't have the funds to join the program yet. Does anyone know where I can find these? Or can you give maybe some advice on how someone can create one or something like that? I tell you what, I tell you this, I tell you this. If you um, do this, um, obviously you're listening to this podcast. This goes to everyone. Send an email to support at stocks to trade.com and I'll have the team send them to you. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, obviously you're a listener. You're here. We appreciate that. You know, normally just for everyone else, to know, because I'm sure there's probably a lot of stocks to trade customers listening. They're on the university site. You can download them. You just got to go to the university and go to resources. Now, if you're not an STT customer, you're still a listener, email support at stocks to trade and say, you know, just put like, hey, you know, 
worksheets from the podcast, blah, blah, blah. And I will, they're PDFs. I'll have them send them to you. So nice. That's awesome. You've got such a warm autumn spirit. Because <laughs> I'm so happy to see you, Stephen. Uh, XOM always said, please. You got someone. a haircut, it looks like. Yeah, but the, the only shaved one side of my head, and I forgot the other side. It's weird. Um, don't XOM. go to a, you Don't go to a drunk barber. <laughs> well, both drunk together. Uh, XOM <laughs> always said, someone help me. Please, someone help me. I'm really confused. I hear people talking about how I need to research the stock markets, ETC, but I don't know where to start. What data should I be recording? Stock charts, volume, the price per day, the percentage of gain loss, and how am I supposed to discover these stocks? All of them, right? So my answer would be, I, and I, I talk about this a lot. I'm still very, 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 very proud of season one of the Steady yes. Trade podcast. It's free. It's free. It's all there. It's on YouTube. It's on iTunes. It's all out there. Um, sounds like you're a, a total newbie, which is cool. We love newbies here. But I tell you, I think that's the best place to go is season one, because basically that's exactly what we did. We, we, we broke it all down. Now, you're not done. It's not like you're going to listen to season one and you're done, but it's a great, I think a great getting started guide. So that, that would, that's always my recommendation. I'm very proud of what Steven and I did there. So beautiful. Yeah. It, am I, am I correct that it is all of the above that he, he's going to, or she needs to track? Oh yeah. Yeah. When it comes to, yeah, it's all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll not add much. I'll just say that I'm proud that Tim's proud of season one because Tim being proud of anything that I'm part of makes me proud. Yeah. Um, well, I just say that to pretend like we're actually friends. So, you know, don't, don't, you know, I gotta, I, I gotta carry, you know, it's, it's part of the, it's part of the theme of the podcast. We have to pretend like we're friends. So I, I remember the second time I ever saw you in real life, I was sitting on my phone and you walked past us at the front of the stage and you knocked me phone out of my hand and it fell on the floor and you didn't even react or look at us. And I, and I had to say to my other American friend, is this what American people do as a joke? <laughs> or is he really? Yeah, nice? I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> no, no, that, that is, come on, Stephen. That's what, I mean, and, and, and I've maybe been thinking it about this for three years. It's a very American <laughs> thing. It's got, it's called, it's busting balls, man. Ah, you, you know, okay. the, the, you, you know, your buddies, I mean, you get six guys around, what do you do? You bust each other's balls. So I knocked your phone out of your hand. So well, that, that, that was my question. It was a sign of love. It was a sign of love. Waiting three years to, to ask you that. Um, <laughs> Razzy says, great episode, guys, talking about books. Uh, this is a good one for Tim and Kim, not for me because I'm a terrible reader. Uh, when are you going to do book of the month? Mm. We never finished, did we? Did we even finish? Never, nah. I think we have a couple more, more books to do. On, so I had too many, too many books to read. I mean, I could stay go. awake. We can do it again. I think we can. We have so many well, books. Well, I love, I we love book so many month, books. Month. I mean, I, uh, you know, again, it, it uh, I love the idea. So. All right. So, so we're listening to Rossi and get some We out. just got to get Steven. We, we just got to make sure that there's, you know, an audible. An audible. In an audible. Crayon, we can do that. We can get all pictures. We got, we'll get them on Audible for him. We'll make sure. We'll make I sure. A, I have a couple of books. We need to do David Goggins. That was a good book. And uh, mm -hmm. there's another good book called Winners. Did you read that, Campbell? Campbell. Yeah, yeah. I read, I thought, I thought yeah, we I, did do the David Goggins nah, book. No? Definitely okay. didn't. But I read it after you guys to. both talked about it. Okay. I, I, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I, again, I, would, I, I would love an excuse to reread it. So, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Such, such a great book. I sent it to a young man that I mentor actually, who lives in New Jersey. Uh, it, the first book he, I, I was, he and I became friends. He worked at a burger place and um, we were talking just about life and stuff. And he struggled with reading. And just by chance, as I was talking to him about how he could, you know, get his reading improved, uh, a, a woman overheard us who was able to become his tutor for how to increase his reading skills. And wow. nice. it was just like this magical little moment. And uh, 
the book, the first book he ever read was a book called The Three Doctors. Uh, and it was the first book he read cover to cover and he loved it uh, about these guys that made a pact to each other to become doctors when they got out of school. And, you know, it was just, it just made me realize because I love reading so much, especially how so many people out there really have uh, challenges with reading. So it made me sensitive to like, wow, that if you don't, and, and I guess I just want to say that too, to the listeners, like there are people out there who are ashamed of that uh, because of learning disabilities or dyslexia. And it's just so important. There are tutors like out there who can really help people uh, have more comprehension with reading. So anyway, it's just a, hard, yeah, uh, a wonderful yeah. thing to have reading. So the, uh, nice. the Basically the three toughest guys I know are these brothers that all had dyslexia. And <laughs> these dudes, I mean, you don't want to mess with these guys because <laughs> I mean, they, they, you know, they, they didn't hate, I mean, and again, I'm not putting them down. They, they yeah. overcame it, yeah. but growing up, they yeah. get ridiculed and they just start busting heads, man. Yeah. And bet. to this day, these dudes, <laughs> that, that was probably how just to say, if, if, you get, if you get in a fight, if you get in a fight, you want these guys on your side. That's for exactly, sure. <laughs> exactly. But I think that happens to a lot of kids. I think there's a lot more learning disabilities in school sure. uh, that the schools are not set up to really address or recognize. And I think it kind of creates even, even David Goggin's story, you know, of what he was going through at home personally and how that translated to his falling asleep in his class. Like if, you're ha if you have a household that's not really safe or comfortable, you're going to be compromised in your learning. And it's not a reflection of your intelligence. It's just a reflection of not having the right teachers or support. So. I totally agree with that. And I, I love the random act of kindness. Um, that's cool. Let's move on before we say anything bad about those, those guys. Cause I don't want me head busted. I don't want me head busted <laughs> up tonight. Don't want to get a head busting. <laughs> uh, Mike O says, uh, why does the market cap size affect the ability to run? If the float is small, I figured the float is the portion of shares actively traded. The portion that matters as the rest of the shares are not actively traded and therefore surely would not hold the price down that much. I don't know if he's got a bit mixed up there between market cap and float. Or... Yeah, because, you know, in essence, unless there's a ridiculous amount of shares that aren't in the float, maybe maybe because it's like a recent IPO or something. Most of the time, if it's a low flow stock, it's invariably going to be a small market cap because, well, I mean, if it's 300 bucks a share, I mean, I, what's the, what's the float on Berkshire A, you know, probably um, Berkshire A, you know, just as an example. So, you know, you've got 300,000 in the float of Berkshire A but it's $319,000 a share. So it's a $500 billion market cap stock. Now with that yeah. kind of stock price, it, you know, it trades, I mean, it's traded a hundred shares today, but um, traditionally the stocks we're looking to day trade, the big movers are going to be a low priced, low float stock, which is, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, price times float gives you your market cap. Well, again, other than the small shares that are locked up in these junk low floaters. So, Typically, it's a it's a you know it's a ratio that's proportional unless you're talking a Berkshire A, but obviously you're not going to day trade Berkshire A. So yeah, and I, I mean the only other thing is sometimes people can't find floats, so you'll just look for market caps because they're easier to find and the floats aren't often accurate. So maybe you're getting confused looking for a, a small market caps. The next best thing to looking at a, a small float. Um, I think we're pretty much out of questions. I just thought in the spirit of of today we could just ask each other a question or just to, just to close out or just have an, an open dialogue about anything we wanted, just to wrap this one up. I have a question for you, Who's Stephen. going first? I, I, have, I have fun. So Stephen, what is, uh, I'm curious just if you're getting some social uh, life in addition to trading. I'm, I'm worried that you're trading 24 seven and I wanna make sure you're getting some exercise and having some, fun times with friends so tell me um it's it's a difficult one because um my parents are quite old so they've been on the planet a while yeah. uh, and the coronavirus is is spreading 
Yeah. So we're kind of under lockdown. We're not allowed to really go out. It's pretty tough. Um, so I can't really go out because I have the guilt of thinking, what if I catch the disease and give it to my parents? It's a bit yeah. like that. And Tim yeah. Bowen's going to have like, I don't know if Tim Bowen's got a different view on this, but um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm a bit, I'm a bit inside uh, for the last few months, but I, I get out once a day for exercise, I trade. Um, but that's it for now, but I'm all right. I'm, I'm in, I'm really, I mean, look, do I miss waking up and having beers if I want to wake up and have beers? Do I miss going to the pool? Do I miss yeah. just getting wasted and no one's telling us off for drinking too much? Yes, I miss all of those things. But it's good for me health at the same time. It's good to have a break. It's good to be under a bit of control. So I, I don't know if that's a long up and down answer, but that's kind of the answer. No, it's a, it's a good answer. I think it's awesome that you're respecting your parents' uh, health by, you know, being mindful of them. I think it's really yeah. beautiful. That's, that, I, I just, I just don't wanna, I don't want to murder them. Yeah. Some, some people care about those things and some people apparently don't in the world. So, <laughs> But uh, Kim, how is, uh, how is the virus in, in Hawaii? Is it, is it kept at bay with love, with love and high energy and spirit or is it? Once they started to let the tourists back in, <laughs> it's not going so well. So we yeah. have, we were supposed to uh, be able to let tourists back in. And just yesterday, after announcing they were going to do double testing, uh, they've just said you have to still come here, be in quarantine for 14 days, even if you're inter-island travel. So I'm just very upset and worried for those because of the tourism industry is the whole island, right? All the yeah. Hawaiian chain of islands. So I'm very worried for all the people who are out of jobs and some people are having to leave Hawaii because that was their, you know, revenue stream. So yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely tricky right now. And it just feels like it's just never ending. I mean, I know not just for Hawaii, but for all over the world, it's like, you know, even New York, I've been hearing there's a, uh, a whole bunch of reoccurrences there. So, but, but I'm fortunate that I'm on the big Island. I mean, gosh, it's seems to be safer than New York city for sure. Uh, and I just try to keep to myself, wear a mask and, uh, you know, I do paddle. We, we do paddle. We wear yeah. our masks in the Harbor until we get out in the ocean because I think we all need it for our sanity, but yeah, it's tricky. And just just quick one for Tim. Your your children are growing older. You're less needed. Are, are you doing okay? You know, it's interesting. It's 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 that's a you know with kids, it's a, it's always an interesting transition. Um, there's days you're kind of like, hey, it's kind of cool. I don't have to drive them around or you know or get them lunch. But there's a lot of days you miss that stuff, man. Um, and it's funny. Uh, it, good question, by the way. Um, so my wife's niece, which I guess would be my niece as well, had a son. He's a, he's a year old. And so my wife's stay at home mom, she's been stay at home mom for 20 years. So she watches him a lot while, uh, while my niece is at, at, uh, at work and man, it's he, and he loves me, he loves me, man. He almost likes me too much. I gotta take him. He loves to go around the yard. And all, we've got all so the trees crazy. and the flowers and We've Tracy put pumpkins everywhere and decorations. We got to go out and count all the pumpkins. And man, it may, it's interesting because it makes you miss it. You know, having, yeah, having yeah. a little guy and, and again, and he, and he just loves me. And, um, he was chewing your so books. Like he was chewing your books up, right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, I was like, don't bite Tim's is, books. Don't bite his books. <laughs> And it, it, it's definitely melancholy sometimes because then, you you know, you think about, well, you know, I remember those days with my kids, but it's also nice. It's almost like being a grandparent type thing, because yeah. the nice thing is if he, if he does get mad, I just hand him my wife and walk away. I'm like, here you go. You're, I'm like, you're the babysitter, man. I got work to do. So, if you, <laughs> so if there are ever, benefits. But... If you ever do need an, another kid around. I got room, right, man. Right, the only I'm right, thing yeah. you're <laughs> right, yeah. You're, you're gonna work. You're gonna you're gonna earn your keep, son. So, I got wood to chop. Okay, I got we got I got to work on that maker space. We got to frame some walls. We got to hang some steel. I got a bunch of landscape stones. I got to set. I'm building a berm. I bet you, 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 berm. I got berm. So I'm putting in a six foot flag. 
a 60 foot flagpole and, and I'm where I'm my landscape buddy, we're building this berm and we're going to stick ro- uh, outcropping rocks into it wow. and then put a, a bunch of more plantings and trees and stuff. So wow. you can run a shovel, right? I bet you don't see, is it Garrison? I bet you don't see him uh, moving steel around. <laughs> yes, he no, does. Things, yeah. steel around. He's no, got his I don't own. believe it. He's got his own little adventure going, his son. He's not doing – now, now I do, he doesn't have many chores now because he's in a tree stand every night, but he's also shot six deer today, this year, so he's, he's oh. back in the freezer. So he's if, you, if freezer. you don't want to do – if you don't want to do hard labor, go out and hunt, and you can put some meat in the freezer, <laughs> that you could earn your keep that way too. So. Yeah, no, and I know there's a whole like, – Have you ever field dressed thing? an animal? Have you ever field no, dressed like, an animal? I think – that when people talk about like people deficient in dopamine and serotonin, I think mm. obviously meditation's a good thing for increasing dopamine, but I bet you're hunting is as well. I bet you're being out in the nature, yeah. hunting, providing, filling Absolutely. those primal needs. Yeah. I bet you it's good for you. You know, I do. Got to be hundred percent, hundred percent, man. I just, man, sitting in a tree stand. I mean, listen, you can take a camera with you too. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, you can sit in a tree stand and take pictures if you want. Totally. There's something about it, man. It's it, 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 it just, and being in the woods, nothing around, you can't hear anything, you know, and it, it's awesome. You know, and, yeah. and like you mentioned, like one of the reasons I split so much wood and cut so much wood is man, it's just, it's a primal thing. It's like, you're, you're, this is in your DNA from thousands of years ago that you need to cut some wood to cook, you know, or to, to heat your family, whatever. Um, so that's one of the reasons I cut so much wood is it's, it's primal, man. So this guy, yeah. Steven Renella, he's the one featured on Tim Ferriss's uh, podcast. He's, he's known I didn't as know it's Steve. meat eater. Stop, Steve. It's Steven yep, Renella. Yep. Michigander, said, by the way. He grew, he grew up he? an hour and a half from me. Yeah, Get yep, out of yep. town. I didn't know that. So he's saying, you know, ask yourself when you turn the faucet and water comes out, where did that water come from? Did it fall as r- snow, rain? Uh, where was it collected? Is it from an aquifer? Who who feeds the aquifer? Ask yourself when it goes down the drain, what is its path to hit the ocean, right? So I think when you're close to the land and you're living off the land, you have a very different relationship to nature and a very different relationship to your own self-sufficiency. And that's what I think you were saying, Stephen. It's that sense of self-sufficiency, which is really kind of robbed by modern technology in a lot of ways. That's the downside to it is where, you know, the, the other book that I, I read a long time ago is a book called uh, The Spell of the Sensuous by Stephen Abrams. And it talked about how our relationship to nature, that, that we talk about nature, but we don't talk with nature. Like we, we talk as if it's something other than us instead of it is us, you know? So anyway, I think that's part of why the depression is so strong today in society because we're not close to nature and in re- relationship to it community with it you know get outside yeah again i think you know and listen there's more and more research that low vitamin d is one of the big contributors to coronavirus yeah. and, and, and how bad it affects you and, and i mean yeah. you think about it i mean there's a lot of people man i mean like like i mean listen think about like new york city okay one of the hardest hit areas I mean, you're in an office, you're in your apartment, even when you're walking, even if you're outside walking to and fro, let's say you're not getting any direct sunlight, you know, you're, you got hundred, you got hundred story skyscrapers everywhere, you Correct. know? So, um, yeah, I mean, so yeah, I mean, I go on and about that forever. Get outside. So yeah, do it's some other shit. Podcast. It's another podcast. <laughs> go outside. Steady life. Which be, by the way, Renella. Yes. Thank you for my, Kim. All, I mean, he's one of the most well-spoken guys out there. Incredible ambassador for the outdoors. I mean, that uh-huh. guy, I mean, I mean, he's a nose to tail guy too. You know, uh-huh. he'll, he eats everything. Uh-huh. I mean, nothing goes to waste. He'll take the high tan it, everything. Wow. But uh, you know, his episodes on Rogan, highly recommended American Buffalo. Great book by he's a hell of a writer too. Guys, Amazing. crazy smart. Amazing. Oh, that sounds so cool. I dated a guy here in Hawaii a couple of years ago who uh, was not only a hunter, but he learned how to, you know, completely butcher an animal. Like he had the butcher skills. So he was living completely off grid and he, you know, he knew what to do with 
what foods other neighbors needed and they would supply his fruit, like his avocados, his bananas, his pineapples. Like there was this whole kind of barter system going on with him and his, you know, the part of the island where he lived, where they, it was just really symbiotic where everybody, you know, fed each other's with their abundance. And I just, I thought that was so cool. I don't think I was, you know, I was like, don't give me the details on the butchering, please. <laughs> but I think it's, I think it's awesome that people could do that. I don't think I could do that, but I think it's pretty cool to be. What I always kind of like is when, you know, speaking of that living off the land and he had, he had to know the people that knew which animal or which, which uh, plants were safe to eat. Has it ever crossed your mind that there's like 85 billion plants on the planet that will kill you if you eat them. But as far as I know, there is no animal meat that you, that will kill you if you eat it, wow. but yet there's a billion species of plants. If you eat them, it'll kill you instantly. Well, not wow. instantly, but will kill you. You know, yep. plants, you know how the invent plants is. want you dead. They want to kill you and then digest you. Yeah. Do you know how they invented the microwave? How? Um, it was like the American government trying to work out how to send signals to each other. And then when they were running tests, food was melting. And um, they realized that the frequency of the gamma rays made the food vibrate really fast and get hot and get warm, which is wow. microwave. I don't use a microwave, you know. I've never who, really who invented the one. microwave? American Secret Service. Oh, oh, so Americans invented the microwave. I don't know. I don't really know, but that's a true story, though. They were trying to send. Do you, do you use a microwave? Other. Is it a microwave an incredible invention? I don't um, use it. I mean, generally, if I've got something cold and I want to make it warmer, I will. I'll put it in the microwave. <laughs> what about you? Because it's too takes too long to put it in the pan. No, oh, I guys. I was just I was just checking. So. It just in creeps America, me out. Have microwaves, right? It creeps me out. We definitely Why? have them, but I just never have wanted to use one. Why? But uh, what do you do when something's cold from the fridge? I'll put it in a you frying pan. Plus, I don't really cook much. But I'll put it in a frying pan or a little oven. Are you got? Are uh, you like delivery culture over there? No, there's none here. So I. Ah, oh, thank God! It's a disaster. <laughs> Fastest way to gain weight. It's, it's true. <laughs> I just want to be with Tim and just. So again, so again, that's you know, you know, back to you know what. So so stay inside, eat takeout food, drink all the time. So so all all the things that the government is telling us are fine. You can yeah. get you can get booze delivered to you now. That's a new rule in Michigan. You is used it? to not be able to get. Yeah, they passed it since the <gasps> shutdown. What? It's like. I mean, why don't you just tell me smoke cigarettes too and crack? Exactly. You know? Tell me. Exactly. Tell me stay inside, smoke crack, and eat takeout. You know. So. But just keep paying your taxes on time. <laughs> Make sure you do that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's awful. I can't believe they're letting that. That's not good. I hasn't, and they're hasn't even talking about, you know, alcohol sales gone through the roof since oh, yeah, this yeah, shut down, exploded. right? Yeah, yeah. That's not good. That's not good at all. Let's have another prohibition. No. Well, I didn't say that. that, but you, should, you know, again, I'm no, I'm no Puritan. I'm no prude, but I, I don't think you should be encouraging it. No. They're encouraging it basically. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. for sure. For sure. Oh. Stay sober, get a brokerage account, learn to trade. That's right. Stay sober. And isn't it isn't it sober October? Tim? Yeah. Isn't it sober Never October? Stable. According to Joe Ro Rogan. Is he doing yes. it this year? I wasn't sure if he was doing yeah. it or not. He is. He's gonna he's gonna have to drink to get over that horrible studio. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was really yeah, disappointed. So, no. I was like, is he actually in Mars? Out. Is he in Mars and it's just like a hiding place? Yeah, and I, you know, <laughs> hey, hey he, he's got the freedom to do whatever he likes, but yeah, it doesn't. Now I listen on the, you know, when I'm walking the dog and stuff, but yeah, every time I, wa I watch the clips a lot and I'm just like, yeah, I don't know, you know, not, not, <laughs> not what I would pick, but. <laughs> yeah, it's not what I would pick either. Let's find the reddest spaceship we can. <laughs> It's just crazy, eh? Uh, uh, Not to worry. So shall I, shall we end this episode? I, I feel like it's turned into a conversation. Yeah. I, I agree, yes. I think okay, we should I end it. Wouldn't keep it all. Wouldn't keep it all. Okay, so this was 
um, a quick deep dive into the personal lives of Stephen, Tim and Tim <laughs> and our mailbag, listeners mailbag special uh, featuring you guys. And if you want to be featured on the next one, just really, you can comment on the steadytrade.com website. You can comment on YouTube, on the, on the Stocks and Trade channel. We'll pick them up. Uh, and uh, otherwise, we will see you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>